Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to FM Soccer Talk. I'm here in El Paso, Texas, with my friend Mike Lopez, who's the owner of the FC Dallas El Paso Academy, uh, along with the creator of Track Futbolero, as you can see here. Um, so we're gonna bring you an exclusive, right? I'm letting you want. I'm giving you guys insight as to who, who my friend is here. Uh, tell us a bit about yourself, Mike. Uh, I'm a 48 year old. Shoot, I turned 49 <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. Uh, here in the El Paso scene, soccer scene, trying to provide uh, opportunities for players from El Paso to come in and uh, go to college, go get out and uh, make pro teams, try out and stuff like that. So, uh, promote El Paso soccer. Right on, no, no. Go. Promoting soccer, that's what we're looking for, right? Soccer ambassadors at all, at all levels. So, uh, ultimately, what got you into soccer? Uh, family, family. Uh, my dad played when I was young. My dad was 18 when he had me, so uh, I was, you know, growing up, throughout, going out there with the teams, uh, was Spain, playing in Juarez, played in, uh, with the Latundas, Young Juarez, and traveled all over Chihuahua, the yeah. place of college and all that, so that got me into it. I was pretty much forced into it. <laughs> A lot of us don't have the option of playing yeah. any other sport, really. I don't know, that's kind of how it was with me, right? I was one of those where I got into soccer and that was, that was the scene that we got into. Um, so what is it that you realized that you wanted to make this like your life passion, your career? I guess uh, once I got out of high school, you know, uh, I started doing uh, private training with kids, one-on-one uh, -on -one training, team training, and it evolved into a business. So that's you know, something I enjoy doing. I enjoy, uh, I enjoy playing, I enjoy uh, teaching, I enjoy coaching, so it turned into a business. So All right, well. Right. Cool. Uh, could you give us a, get a bit of insight as to the businesses that you're kind of getting along, that you're bringing along to the Paso scene? Uh, I've had different kind of businesses. Right now, I have uh, Football Rapido. I have a warehouse and some uh, turf fields outside the turf, turf field that play seven on seven, five on five. Uh, youth leagues. I run the uh, I own the uh, East Paso Soccer League, which is catered uh, to kids from uh, four years old to uh, fifteen years old. Also, I have a double league, the passive soccer that uh, run five on five, six on six, women, co ed, 11 v 11, women's league. So, so as you can uh, see, you're, you're heavily involved, heavily engrossed in the game. Man. When uh, when did you fall in love with the sport? I think we all have that pivotal moment. I mean, that, that you realize, you know what, this is this is this part of me. It's part of me, maybe when uh, I start getting recognition of my playing abilities, you know? Yeah. Uh, you grew up playing and. People start noticing for your ability to play and they start giving you special treatment. Like, oh man, I like that. <laughs> well, I like that attention. So, so like, ah, you're getting that pretty cleats. Exactly. Pretty jerseys. Jerseys, traveling, other you know, teams that might even go travel out of the uh, Tournaments that started falling over there. Yeah. yeah. So there's a bit of that personal recognition. I think that, that that's awesome. I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of us kind of, uh, identify ourselves as soccer players, as, as cracks in the game. Um, what's one of the most vivid memories that you could recall uh, kind of growing up? Uh, playing in soccer, playing soccer in El Paso, or playing in tournaments. One of one of the memories that kind of triggers a lot of uh, happiness. Happiness just uh, enjoying the game with friends. You yeah. make life out friends with soccer. You know, even people you play against, the people that play with you, you become like family. It's a bond. It's a bond, and uh, that's the memories I, I take with me. I, uh, I'm a little, little bit older, and uh, you see guys that you played against, and you're like, wow. You have that respect for that person. You yeah. know, when you're on the field, you have no friends. But <laughs> after, after you're done with the game, you know, you're, you're, you enjoy the same passion. And, and, and that's what I love most. Yeah. Yeah. I think you, you mentioned something neat with the community. Right? That's one of the things that we uh, highlight. Right? Is you establish a community, you, you create bonds with people. Like you. Even if perhaps you, you have a bit of, of a rivalry with somebody, yeah. ultimately you're part of the whole side community in general. So, um, talking about communities, uh, do you have any sports teams that you follow uh, soccer wise? Like the, I'm, I'm assuming you go with the local motives. Yeah, yeah, of course. Right? You support the, the local, local town. Local, local town. You know, the yeah. local town. The indoor or Paso de Lourdes, we have a lot of players that play through there, that came into my, my academy, my league, and stuff like that. So it's good to go see out there and see players that you know. Some grow up, some playing in your leagues, and you know, you got to support them. You yeah. support the you know, soccer player. You know, if you need to a certain uh, team or anything like that, you got to support them. That's you awesome. Soccer. Uh, if you have a La like, Liga like, Mekis, MLS, Liga CBL, Mekis. when I was young, I used to go, I was an America fan. Get out! Oh know, my God. I learned, I learned better. <laughs> you know, I learned better. Uh, my dad was an America, America fan. I grew up, you know, the Globski, Mataka, you know. Yeah. 
Uh, so I, I enjoyed that. But once I started to know how, how really soccer, how, how, how it evolves, <laughs> I became a Pumas fan. Okay. Yeah, Pumas. You know, they turned out players. You know, it's a soccer factory out there turning out players and stuff like that. You know, that, that ended maybe 10, 12 years ago. I became a Chivas fan. Ah, uh, now you're talking. Now you're talking. Okay, so, well, welcome to yeah. our community. I, you know, international, I'm a Barcelona fan. It's like the style of play, you know, a little bit more land. Yeah. yeah. style of play. You know, national teams, first, got to go with the U.S., you know. Second, Mexico. Okay. The Mexico not playing U.S., I'm a Mexico fan. But U.S. playing, I'm the U.S. I, I, think, I think that's something that's pretty unique about where we're at. It's, yeah. it's having that love for both teams. Both teams yeah. I mean, it's, it's uh, supporting Mexico when they're not playing the U.S. That's one of the things yeah. that I kind of... Uh, I, I do as well, uh, but uh, you, were, you were talking about the U.S. national team, and you, you have a player that came out of the Dallas Academy, uh, Reggie Cannon. He recently yeah. played in the final of the, of the uh, Gold Cup. Um, a little bit of, of uh, information on him that you know about? Oh, Reggie, uh, I think he's 21 years old, you know, plays right back, came out of the Academy. I think he came out of Houston, born in uh, Chicago, Illinois. You know, I'll be coming to uh, start out there. Uh, yeah. And, uh, also, Paxton, uh, he was part of the team. I don't know if he played this. No, 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 no. But, you know, they're young talent that's going, going through. They came through the academy. You know, they signed their pro contract. Uh, they're playing for the first team. And now they're living in this uh, U.S. team. So, uh, that's real cool, man. So yeah. congratulations on that, being yeah. being uh, part of an academy that, that produces players of that kind of quality, that kind of caliber. Um, I think that you and I have mutual friends with uh, with Mikey Ambrose, Sam Monas, and Gala that we know. Um, any any up and comers that perhaps you you want to give a shout out to? Oh no, we got uh, Ricardo Pepe. He signed uh, with Percy uh, maybe a month ago. They signed him with the sixteen year old. You know, played for the U.S. national team, and uh, he's coming. And hopefully, uh, he'll he'll make his proud like uh, Alex Andejas playing with Chivas. That's right. Uh, he was one of our players that came in. He was a U seventeen U.S. Uh, Chile World Cup. Yep. U seventeen played with. Uh, uh, the national team, he was the captain of that, uh, that era. You know, he went to play with Chivas. You know, they bought him off NC Dallas. He yep. went to play with Chivas. We have to give out the, the rights to play with the U.S. national team while he's in Chivas. So, yeah. Hopefully that will change pretty soon. You know, he's out there. You know, he's 21. So he's still young. So, Ricardo Pepe, we got Sendejas out of Chivas. Um, you know, I believe that there was another kid in the Pinier Academy that is playing uh, a rival to, to uh, Pepe. Oh, yeah, yeah. Santo Munoz, Santiago Munoz. No, same team as Pepe, 16 year old, played in our, uh, in our teams and uh, they just went separate ways, you know? Yeah. They're, playing, they're both from El Paso, they both played on the same team in the academy in El Paso, but uh, one's playing for the uh, Mexican national team and one's playing for the U.S. national team. Which is yeah. pretty cool, right? It's a yeah. bit ironical, but it's uh, neat nonetheless. I mean, that tells you the talent we have here in El Paso, you know? Which kind of brings me to my next point. What, what, what's your uh, thought on the talent of El Paso? You know, we just have excellent time. You know, there's so much competition here amongst uh, the league teams that every every game is you know battle, battle, battle. So every kid has to you know give out the best. So every time uh, yes, that's kind of comes here, the scouting you know see the local time every year they take two or three players. Yeah, the academy out there. That's saying so, something. Saying something. Uh, uh, Frisco, there's so many teams out there. You know, say they have a U15 team, probably have 12 teams, 15 under 15. The whole uh, Dallas area. So every kid from that, from those premier teams, try to make it to the first team. So every kid that comes, uh, uh, Scott's can see in El Paso, they go directly to, to the county. So Mike, uh, you grew up in El Paso. Uh, tell us a bit about the where you played, the clubs you played, uh, your development as a player. Okay. I grew up playing in Juarez. You know, I lived in El Paso, but. Uh, Dad played in Paris every weekend, so I started playing out there. The youth leagues out there. Yep. You know, uh, when I was 11 years old, there was a club team here called the Paso Santos. You know, pretty pretty popular uh, club here, best in El Paso at the time. Uh, you know, <laughs> which uh, Dr. Filiberti, which he, he also uh, owns a league here in Paso, Paso Norte. The dog, you know, took me to see if I wanted to play with him. The traveling team, so I with that. Uh, went to high school at Bel Air. You know, to my Highlanders out there. You know, they won the uh, state title this year. Yeah. They graduated in 89, the MVP, city score MVP for the city back in 89. Awesome. After that, uh, uh, there was an indoor team here the first year called the Apache Six Shooters. 
signed a pro contract with him right out of high school with him. And uh, that turned into a Paso Spurs, which is another indoor team. Yeah. yeah. Coliseum. And from there, uh, Nico Cervantes from the Patriots got out the, the, the franchise. Yeah. He became a uh, Paso Patriots, so I played there a couple of years after that. Awesome. Okay. Well, so, uh, talk, talking about, uh, you know, you being the leading scorer and you being, uh, you know, the, getting the, those contacts at the high school yeah. and all that. Uh, what what position did you play, and what style of play would you say you have? Okay, position uh, I played was center forward back in uh, high school, and uh, throughout the years after that, I started progressing backwards, <laughs> so center mid to uh, center defender. When I played okay. with the Patriots, so, so uh, my style of play was I'm just a hard worker. I was uh, yeah. I'm never the fastest, never the strongest, never the most skilled, but I was yeah. had the most. Busted ass. Busted ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Falls yeah. out. Yeah, falls out all the time. So every time I played, that was not for that. Okay. Right on. Um, so I guess any advice that you have for kids, uh, which, which, uh, what, what would you have to say for somebody that's looking to develop as a player, looking to make it to the big stage? You know, practice every day. Practice every day. Uh, the academy having in El Paso, the Paso, uh, it's in Dallas. We tell every kid, you know, you go to practice two or three times a week for two hours. That's not gonna make you a good player. Um, anytime you have off, anytime you go outside, you know, as I tell everybody, the wall is your best friend. You know, just take the ball next to the wall, control it back and forth. You have to be out there playing every day. You know, you be a I that's a big distinction. I think it's that everyday kind of play, getting familiar with the ball, uh, work is, working on things that you feel that you could improve upon. Exactly. Uh, like, yeah, that's uh, that, that's that's incredibly important for any sort of development for a player. I'd say. I think that one of the things that uh, we were discussing before we were recording was uh, the psychology of a player yeah. and how you kind of need to have that mindset. Yeah. Um, when it comes to that mentality of the game, any sort of uh, pointers? Uh, Staying plugged in, making sure that you don't get out of the moment. Yeah, exactly. Stay focused on what you're doing. Stay focused on what you're doing. Uh, also, if you want to play college ball, you got to hit the books, man. You know, as a, as a college coach, they're always looking for, for players. But if you ain't got the grades, you ain't got the safety scores, it's hard to get the recruit for that. Yeah. I can tell every kid on basketball. The soccer is the easy part. Being the books, <laughs> you know, getting your grades up, GPA, SAT scores. You know, if you want to play D1, that's what you do. So you're an advocate of the, the oh, college definitely. game. Yeah. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Not everybody's going to be a pro. Yeah. Not everybody's going to be a pro. I think that, that you had something, like not everybody's going to be a pro, so making sure that you're well rounded as a player is important. Um, if you're looking to be at the pro level, I, I, I think that I have, um, if you think that you could reach that level or have or ready, I've, I've always said, well, you know, take that jump, take that leap to yeah. the USL, take the leap to the MLS if you could, if you could get there, um, or even then play abroad. Um, but again, it, 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 the college soccer, it's, it's progressing, it's getting better. Uh, so make sure that you hit the yeah. books, hit the books. Coming hit the this books. Way. A lot of uh, scouts come out here and person me ask, okay, what's your GPA, what's your SAT scores? Yeah. And then they ask, how did you play? First, you gotta hit the books. Don't okay. play college ball. Uh, so I guess transitioning a bit into uh, local soccer, uh, locomotives, it's, it's they're finished, they're, they're in the middle of their first year. Yeah. They're doing incredibly well by, by you know, most standards. Uh, what do you gotta say about them? You know what, uh, they're doing great. You know, we got Chapa from El Paso, came out about this, Dallas Academy out here in the local leagues. You know, he's doing good. He got an opportunity. You know, just got to go. He's got to go. Yeah. He's going to win. So, so hopefully he'll, do, he'll develop a better. He's still young, 22, 23 years old. So, Marcel Salgado, I remember when I got back in the MLS. Yeah. Like, I think it was uh, 2012, 2013. Yeah, Vancouver. Vancouver, so he's doing good. He's doing good. Omar came out of Texas Fire, that came back to Dallas. So, that's good. Uh, a few things so, that you could, uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one thing is, uh, you know, we got the local talent here. You know, locomotives, should, you know, maybe see a, bit, a little bit more of players, a little bit more, local players, a little, a little bit more of a chance to, to make that team because we got the talent. You know, we got uh, Texas FC in uh, Dallas. They have horrible players from Paso, you know, uh -huh. playing out there. Okay. Uh, how old so, are they? Uh, between uh, Hector Montalvo, to Sosa Grillo, to Pepe, who just signed the first team. Uh, they're all under, I think Tessa's 23, Hector's 21, but 16, so, right. you know. Um, what do you think makes a, a, an El Paso player distinct? I think their hard work, their humbleness, you know, uh, 
nothing's given to them. And I think that they know that they have to work hard. They're hard workers. We got to make sure that when we send players out there, we make the same, we send the, the correct players. Yeah. They're, they're good in school, they're coachable, and they're in town. They're not just about soccer, it's, you know, all around good person. Yeah. So we got to make sure we send the good, uh, good talent and all around that represent us in El Paso. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. So if you talk to any of the scouts, any of the, on the first first uh, team coach, Gucci Gonzalez, he used to be the county director, he tell him, they always give a compliment how, how uh, disciplined and how good the kids are and come out of El Paso they go play in Frisco. So that's a good that's great. Good, that's a good indication that what, what, what's going on here in El Paso um, is a strong promotion for the city, developing great players. Uh, we have a few playing, I mean, globally. I know that you have uh, your friends with uh, people playing in the seas. Yeah. You have uh, people that are playing in Mexico, playing, playing here in the States at different, various levels, right? MLS, uh, USL. USL. Right? Uh, yeah. MASL, yeah. Major Arena so Soccer League. The kid playing in Australia, second division in Australia, which is good, you know? Yeah, exposure, that's cool. That's, that's awesome. That's, that's really neat to hear. Um, so I guess getting a bit into uh, your your brand, your soccer image, the, you, you bring up track food bolero. I guess uh, one of the things that people that aren't familiar with the term would want to know. Uh, so define what is track food bolero and who is a track kind of player? Track food bolero, easy ace of the team, you know, the star. The one that makes a difference on the field. So uh, if you're, you know, familiar with the, the term in the soccer world, you know, everybody wants to know who the crack in the team is. Yeah. You know, if somebody tells you you're a crack, it makes you gives you the compliment that they're the best player on the, on the field. Yeah. You know, so uh, that evolved into uh, people used to call me crack. You uh, <laughs> see Jerry here, you tell hey, what's up, crack? You know, see them play. So you give you give them a, a props. Yeah, shout you know, out, shout out, and all that. So that evolved into the brand. Yeah, the the brand. It's right. respect on the field, and then respect. your respect when yeah. you're out there. Exactly. exactly. Okay. So, you know that evolved too. You know, I got it four or five years, and evolved from cap to t-shirts and so all the other stuff that we plan to bring in this this year. All right, man. Well, that's exciting. I uh, can't wait to yeah. see uh, more more pro more talent coming yeah. out of the area. Can't wait to see a bit more of the products that are going to be developing. Um, you're doing great things, and I think that uh, the SOC community wants to acknowledge you with that and saying good. thank you and congratulations on everything you've done. Yeah. Well, thank you for uh, having me and uh, good luck with your podcast and uh, all the business events that you're doing. Hopefully, we'll, we'll go together. All right, sounds good, man. Good stuff.